Hey guys, Mead Ronald's Chris Tomer with this afternoon mountain weather update. Let's go to California. This is the next storm system. It is inbound at this point. Solid line of rain, thunderstorms, a lot of wave action onshore with this storm system. It's a large, sprawling area of low pressure. I'll show it to you on water vapor coming up. But So it's just going to take some time before that wall of moisture reaches Shasta, reaches Tahoe, reaches Mammoth. And that happens tonight, late tonight, and throughout the day tomorrow. Um, but with this, just like the last storm, high snow levels with this, with this storm, we're getting blasted with Pacific warmth. And so I'm thinking, you know, at a minimum, 8,000 to 8,500 feet, probably rain snow line with the best snow accumulations above nine or 10,000 feet. So um, I'm thinking Shasta, and let me take you to Shasta right now. Not much happening in waiting here at the base cam um, at Shasta. I'm thinking, you know, probably above 10,000 feet, we're going to get 10 to 18 inches of accumulation, something like that. A foot for sure, I think uh, above 10,000 at Shasta. Um, and if you're above 9, 10,000 down through Mammoth, you'll pick up some good accumulation. But below that, it's just so warm with, the, with this storm system. And I got to tell you, I mean, this is just one of four storm systems through 1-7. One of them may slip south of California, but all four have a West Coast California trajectory. They'll run through California. It's this closed low syndrome that we're seeing right now. Um, and I talked about the California snow levels um, in Colorado. So not a lot of this moisture is surviving the trip into the interior states of Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado. A lot of this precip is just drying up before it reaches those states. There's going to be a little bit of light snow that survives with a warm front in Colorado on New Year's Eve. I'm talking like an inch of accumulation, so not much. Looking down the road, it is storm number four of the batch that's going to be the pattern changer. That's the one that's going to drag down colder air from Canada and deliver more widespread snow. So I'm thinking Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, your next best chance of snow is going to be 1.6 through 1.8 if everything holds together that, uh, that I'm seeing here. Let me take you back and show you what all this looks like right now on water vapor satellite imagery. So this is a large sprawling area of low pressure and that's why we're getting this powerful feed into, into uh, California. A lot of Pacific warmth, uh, big waves, um, a lot of wind, all of that. Um, there's another big area of low pressure behind it, and then there's another one behind that as well. And the flow is just going to take everything right into uh, California and into the West Coast. And again, it's almost like all this moisture hits a wall over here, and it can't make it up and over into the interior states. That's what's happening now. But again, storm number four should be the one that changes all of that. Here's the forecast radar and satellite. That's the current state of affairs. This is the latest data. So there's the snow overnight into tomorrow. This is uh, 12.30 at 6 a.m. Tahoe Mammoth Shasta. Still there in the afternoon in some of those places. Now that storm moves into the interior and most of the precip dries up, but you can see a little band of snow right there through the western slope of Colorado along I-70. And again, that's New Year's Eve morning and New Year's afternoon, a little band of about an inch of accumulation. And that's it for a little while. All right, here's uh, New Year's Day. Here's the day after, waiting on the next storm system. Here it comes into the west coast, throws in a lot of warmth and precip. There's one three late in the day, a little bit of snow again slides through uh, the Sierra and tries to make the move into the interior. But it's really that storm, it's the one behind this. It's, it's the storm system behind this that, that really has that pattern changing potential. Let me show you the, the jet pattern. So this is one five. Here comes that fourth storm system out of uh, the Pacific Northwest. And, and notice the hookup. It's got, that, it's got that ability to pull cold air down from Canada, and it's going to do it on that northern branch. And that northern branch is buckling. Here it is on 1617. That wave, that area of low pressure, that trough has now translated all the way south through Utah and Idaho and Wyoming, Montana, Colorado. So this is the, really this is the next best hope for cold air and snow accumulation, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, and 1.8, as it looks right now. Let me show you the numbers with this. Not much happening here except in the Sierra through 1231. Again, if you're above 9, 10,000 feet, that's where most of the accumulation is going to occur. And keep in mind, these are mid-mountain numbers, so they're going to be smaller. Um, in Colorado, looking at about an inch, maybe a couple of inches up on top of the Continental Divide on 1231. Here's the exciting second period. So again, if the northern branch gets involved, we pull down cooler air, generate more snow accumulation, 
and you can see it's much more widespread. Um, so again, that leading edge comes down through Banff and the Pacific Northwest drops into Idaho, Montana, all the way back into California where we could see a couple of feet over there at the higher elevations in those purple shaded areas. Um, we could see snow accumulation in Utah, Colorado, um, and this only goes through 1.7. We would see the additional accumulation on 1.8, so the numbers would eventually be larger in Utah, Colorado, and even New Mexico for that matter. Um, so that's something to watch out for. Now here's the northeast. The numbers have fluctuated. Again, just light snow accumulation on 12.30, and maybe another little shot of some light snow down the road, but there's not much here. One to four inches, northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and northern Maine. I'll take you back to this, and again, this is... We're just, you know, really, I'm really hoping this pattern holds and we get this pattern change. I mean, it looks like most of the variables that we look at, look at the clues and the atmosphere, not only down here, but in the stratosphere, seem to indicate that something's going to happen by the time we, uh, we get to this time period and beyond, and beyond this as well. So I'll keep an eye on it, guys. Always thanks for tuning in here. Appreciate it and take care.